Wave 6 for the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass is coming on the 9th of November, probably the 8th of November for the Western Hemisphere, and we're revving up the analysis machine once again to cover it all. The final 8 courses have been revealed with noticeable differences from their last appearances that we spotted from the North American teaser trailer, Japanese website clips, official screenshots, and even some exclusives from Nintendo Dream Web. Additional clues were found by contributors of the Super Mario Wiki, so let's drive straight in. Tour Romavanti marks the start of the Acorn Cup. All three main variants seem to be combined as usual. The first variant is seen with drivers turning left at the Victor Emmanuel II monument in Piazza Venezia, and when Pauline passes the Piazza Navona fountains from the steps. Rocky wrenches appear here like in Romavanti 2, matching their Super Mario Bros. 3 design rather than tours. But at the same time, rings appear with fuzzy circling them, like Romavanti 3. They both spin clockwise this time. The glide ramp for passing through these rings is smaller now. Romavanti 3 is more distinctly traversed, as indicated by the chain chomps in the Colosseum and also the path traced by Link when passing the new blue traffic cones. A route change seems possible at the Piazza del Popolo at some point, demonstrated by Pauline and trailing racers here, almost seeming like Romavanti R or 3R than a normal variant. Many windows, like those in the Palazzo dei Conservatori in Piazza del Campetonio, have lights toggled either on or off compared to Tour. Along with the fountains of the Piazza Navona, the Trevi Fountain flows now with distorted reflections filling the pool. A couple of potted plants replaced the flower pot nearby. Railing was added by the sides of the road leading into the Colosseum for the first variant route, with dirt and grass replacing the cement on the left side and maybe even the right. Red and white crowd control fences were inverted for some reason. An arrow sign was placed along this path, just barely visible from this angle. The road to the Colosseum was given a simple brick texture, and so was the Colosseum itself. Cobblestone now graces the Piazza Venezia pavement. The main streets have had brick already, but it's not uniform anymore. Clouds seem different, while the moon is rotated a bit and in a different spot. The music is a clean improvement, including subtle mallet support for the counterpoint. Not bad! GCN DK Mountain has some tweaks here and there, like how DK barrels were placed in the second off-road corner cut, likely to be destroyed by a boost item. Much of the fencing when approaching the barrel cannon, now sporting the DK logo and a wooden carriage, was demolished. The glide ramp style switched to game standard with the regular wood removed. From an aerial view, we can see that the angry face and top of the volcano glow red hot. Above, an eagle or condor soars. And below, new palms, bushes, and even a lot of rock cover the formerly empty ground. Ramps on the volcano path were remade from the ground up, quite literally, being wider than before. Boulders just ahead may drop at a quicker rate, or at least that's how it seems from this image. Items create incentive to use both of the halfpipes nearby. The fencing style transitions to little posts inside the bend after the second halfpipe. Some of the fencing on the other side was removed, likely destroyed by boulders as the ground damage indicates. The last two big curves were reformed to create deep traversable banks rather than stopping at plateaus. Little posts fence off part of the chasm, preventing drivers from taking a shortcut. But why? DK barrels line the cliffside along part of the curvy area, which we haven't seen here before. Near the finish line, the bridge rope and posts have been cut. There's a different arrangement of some plants, including flowers, but the musical arrangement has an improved baseline. Feel that jungle groove. We Daisy Circuit was teased in September, but the recent preview hasn't revealed anything we didn't already know. Fortunately, we had prepared a list that includes the five details from our short back then and many more. As we mentioned, the building shortcut has a dash panel and a glide ramp now, while four large dash panels were added around the lighthouse. A normal ramp was placed on the road after the tunnel. Seagulls are still gone. And even now, we don't know what's going on inside the tunnel. Well, at least the sunset skies are brighter and mix things up with a bit of blue. The cobblestone road is tan instead of gray, and the tarmac definitely doesn't have a blue-green tint anymore. Rooftops have distinct tiles again like they did for Wii, and grass is very grassy. Potted plants around shops became potted flowers, and traffic cones were placed in this area. Cones around the fountains are arranged differently than before, and the chevron signs were removed entirely. The fountains themselves flow more realistically, and the red arrow sign by the lighthouse seems to be gone. Spectators throughout the course are different, and the grandstands have both 3D spectators in front and 2D spectators in the back. The starting line banner text background switched from black to white, and confetti now falls all around here. 
We love the new flute counterpoint in the theme intro. The whole piece is more obviously a bossa nova, one of my favorite genres. Pirata Plant Cove stylishly concludes the acorn cup. Like city tracks, the three main variants are combined into a single racing experience. It seems to span three separate laps rather than having sections, since the alternate banner on the cliff is missing. We can see the first variant as drivers turn left after passing through the pd themed Piranha Temple ruins and hop the gap. Along this route, the underwater thwomps seem to be moved a bit further back from the dash panels. They produce bubbles when slamming into the ground now. Jelly beams floated into this area too. Behind them, the arrow barriers became one big arrow sign. The route for Piranha Plant Cove 2 is shown by the glide ramp, which was extended with a metal part and also became extra thick. This path continues over the ramps by the temple, with added water geysers, up the steps, and then back into the water ahead. After the twin stairs that used to lead to the finish line for the second variant, the first piranha plant seems to have moved a bit further down the path. Piranha Plant Cove 3 is represented by the shipwrecks, where a clampy was added by the treasure. Headlights turn on in the depths with the dangerous Malray and Bulber. It's kind of dark all over the course though, with the moon serving as the main source of light. It now features a glowing ring and fortunately doesn't get obstructed by the clouds that seem to have changed. There are different spectators and even piantas appear. Snorkeling toads, angelfish, and other little fish are by the temple. Don't get eaten, little guys! The music was good in tour, but it's great here, with more realistic guitar strumming in the left. Yeah, Tour Madrid Drive kicks off the spiny cup. Once again, each of the three variants is incorporated as part of this version of the track. Like in the first variant, racers drive under the Segovia viaduct and wrap around the fountain statue to cross over it. However, the Goombas seem to be missing as well as the ramps on the overpass. In the background, thwomps are active in the San Miguel market from the second variant. Tow travels through the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium in the direction of the first variant route. Dash panels are on the field now, and fencing is a bit different by the entrance. Some of the chevron signs on the side are off or not present, like the downward pointing marquee above the exit. Stadium audience members were rearranged, but poor Red Yoshi can't get a seat with fellow Yoshis. Aww. Mario glides over the Retiro Park Pond with the water geysers in the positions as in Madrid Drive 2, but traveling in the direction of 2R, so the second variant inclusion may be in reverse. The Fountain of the Fallen Angel in the back now pours water. Our plucky plumber also follows the path of Madrid Drive 3 up to Cuchillero Street. The brick road by the starting line, where confetti falls now, all the way to the Cuchillero's arch entrance to Plaza Mayor is different. Toad races through Plaza Mayor with the route matching the third variant, but the big wigglers and lack of ramps are reminiscent of the second variant. But wait, the wigglers are asleep here and probably will wake up over time like in DS Mario Circuit. And the arrow barriers are different here, with rope stanchions all over by the slightly arranged seating. Further ahead, the flooring of the Prado Museum has new tiles. The skylights don't seem to have sun rays now, but spotlights have appeared by some paintings, including that with a real piranha plant popping out of it. Castanets were added to the awesome flamenco music. We can't wait to hear the stadium and museum variations. 3DS Rosalina's Ice World is a surprising but welcome addition. Not much has changed here from what we've seen. Penguins on ice seem to be in slightly different spots, such as this one at the end of the lake and another sliding by the hut. Maybe this swimming penguin is in a location it never visited before. But the coolest update to the course so far is the ramp that was placed by the snow left of the main path before the finish line as a nice shortcut. At the finish line, which is also the starting line, the banner has a prismatic effect now. There's a new edge lining the curb of the decorative road, and the curb itself extends further, wrapping around into the snowy area. Smoke rises from huts into the night sky that has become filled with colorful nebula-like galaxies. And with the addition of spectators, they can enjoy the gorgeous celestial view. The music for the track has always been rather unorthodox, but this time it has a bouncy new bass. Cool. SNES Bowser Castle 3 has been anticipated by many after its impressive glow-up and tour and many changes have been made since. 
Speaking of glowing, the lava is much brighter. Timed lava plumes also shoot up all over the course, out of bounds. Lava falls flow much slower now, and the grates from which they pour reveal bricks inside rather than just darkness. At the starting line, the seemingly fabric banner now has depth? Weird. The ramp just after the first bin now features an anti-gravity panel, and the arrow sign that was next to it was removed. Lava bubbles hop over the grate in this area, replacing the thwomp on the path, and the ramp at the end switched from tour style to being part of the metal grate. All tour style ramps became this type, even when connected to stone. Just ahead is the ramp field, where all boosted ramps lost their dash panels. Here the right off-road strip in the middle disappeared. The far end of the pit on the left was paved over, ditching the ramp entirely. Safety cones appeared in this spot. Meanwhile, the right ramp was extended to cover the width of the lava pit. Spin boost pillars were added to the southwestern section that became a grate with no off-road portion. There's a transition on the brick floor after this point. Another arrow sign was removed at the 90 degree bend, and the off-road part was modified to be a gentler angle. A thwomp was added after this spot, and the thwomps before the tall walls were offset. The angles of all four boosted ramps on the dividers were made parallel to the tops of the walls. Boost panels followed by regular ramps on the left and right lower paths were combined to be a boosted ramp on each side. At the same time, the boosted ramp in the middle corridor became a dash panel followed by a grate ramp. Guard blocks were added to the curved grate just beyond. The final ramp seems more extended right after the bone piranha plant that is still present and a pair of thwomps was placed just after the final lava pit. Now, thwomps make hot glowing cracks in the bricks. The track's iconic theme is based on Super Mario World's battle against Bowser. This one is more of a metal and hardcore like this generation's Bowser themes, even including wailing guitar and hyper synth organ arpeggios. Impressive. Wii Rainbow Road serves as the grand finale of not just the Spiny Cup, but the Booster Course Pass as a whole, and it's well deserved. The entire race seems to be an anti-gravity, and it's likely more than just one lap this time, as indicated by the racers who don't seem excited over crossing the finish line. Similar to Wii, the checkerboard panels of the road are uniform tiles now, with a golden glowing edge. And much like 3DS Rainbow Road, the star rings have a different style. Far more realistically textured asteroids grace the dive now. But cloud formations on the Earth below have become suspiciously symmetrical. Hmm. Land formations seem different too. At the wavy road are more star bits, rearranged, with purple and aqua returning from Wii. Circular ramps around the giant holes are back for sure, and floating arrows here and beyond appear only when approached now. There's item incentive for using either of the two half pipes around the first hole, but just coins are offered for the second set. At least two spin boost pillars were installed between this point and the launch star ahead. Whoa, look at DK leap over the bins here. Looks like that stunt can be done again. The launch star seems to emit much more subtle rays than before, but it produces a musical effect like in Wii once more. And the glide ramp for it became thick too. The half pipe ramp on the landing point of the gap jump was omitted, since it was for the R variant in tour. Star bits returned to this spot, which were only in the original previously, and the jump loop has a different visual effect. At the split paths, fencing was added in various spots. Also along both lanes, most dash panel and star ring combos were moved a bit, with the two further down even switching sides. The chevron barrier seemingly went from a U-shape to a V-shape, but it's hard to say if it will affect gameplay in any minor way. All dash panels with star rings in the tunnel moved to the respective opposite sides, and the same visual effect as the gap jump was applied to the tunnel. The legendary music is a generally safe enhancement that still retains the DS Rainbow Road flow and good A Galaxy reference, but it adds a lovely violin where the piano and flute play later, feeling oh so complete. We can't wait to hear more of the entire soundtrack in the upcoming Jukebox feature. And that's all of the various changes we saw for the courses in the preview of Wave 6 coming by this Thursday when we'll cover each track individually. Unexpectedly, Piranha Plant Pipeline did not make the cut, but this is a great set to end this long DLC journey. It's full of solid tracks that we'll enjoy, along with great new characters, me suits, and features, while we wait for the next Mario Kart installment. Go Pauline! But what do you think? How would you rank this set so far? And which track are you most looking forward to playing? Let us know in the comments below. 
And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more Booster Course Wave 6 for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and other things Nintendo too. Thanks for watching! Until next time, ciao!